Good evening. We're going to call to order the Thursday, April 11th meeting of the Capitola City Council. Can I have a roll call, please? Councilmember Clark? Here. Councilmember Morgan? Here. Councilmember Peterson? Here. Vice Mayor Brooks? Here. And Mayor Brown? Here. Thank you. Uh, if you could please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. All right. Do we have any additions or deletions to tonight's agenda? Staff has no changes to the agenda this evening. All right. With that, we have a very exciting presentation tonight. Uh, we have a performance of Capitola Village Sunday, sung by Robert Seals. This was brought forward at the request of uh, Council Member Morgan, who had heard, I don't know if you heard the song or just heard that there was a song. A saw a clip of this, and we are excited to have what we believe is our first musical performance at a Capitola City Council meeting. So, welcome, gentlemen. We're excited to have you and, and to hear your music tonight. Yeah. 
kids are running like monkeys. Footloose in the stand. Someone's playing football with a boombox in their hand. When the sunscreen stops working, oh, so far. Out of the kids and all that stuff fit back into the car. gentlemen that was wonderful I don't know if we have a city anthem but sounds like we might now maybe we do now thank you so much for being here we appreciate thank you <laughs> we are so grateful that you uh, came here to share your music with us this evening and we are honored to be represented Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Here, sir, if, you, if you want to come up to the microphone, because uh, people online aren't going to be able to hear you. I just, I just wanted to say we have a foundation called Mother Nature's Temple, a nonprofit that I created. We've been here for many years, but we do uh, kids outings. We have a boat out of Moss Landing, and we do whale outings. We work with uh, probably over 100 schools. And like today, we had 40 kids up on our land. We have uh, 50 acres up out of uh, on Old San Jose as well. So um, we're really involved with the community and, you know, all this is very important to us. But anyway, thank you. Thank you. Any comments, Council? Yeah, I just want to thank uh, JR for bringing the video to me and um, letting us enjoy this little treat. Thank you. It was awesome. Thank you very much. <laughs> I just want to say thank you, too, and I love the sound of that uh, instrument. I'm not sure what it was, but... Do the slide guitar. slide guitar, very, very beautiful sound. Thank you. I think every council meeting should start with yeah. some smooth <laughs> grooves to set the tone for all the work we're doing here in the community. And thank you for being part of it. Oh, there you yes. go. When the credits roll, I think there's some directions. <laughs> all right, I have a feeling we're going to be.
Council to adopt that as the official song for Chapel Hill. Second. Second. Am I allowed to do that by decree? Sure. Seriously? No. I'm asking the attorney. <laughs> The risk is low? Okay, by, by official mayoral decree, I think we've adopted uh, Capitola Village Sunday as our official city song. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> All right. We have a song now. I love it. Okay. Um, the rest of the meeting seems not quite as, like, festive now. Okay. Uh, any report on closed session? Good evening. Uh, we had a closed session on the item on the agenda, and no reportable action was taken. Thank you. We'll move on to item five, additional materials. It looks like we have some additional materials this evening. Staff provided one additional email related to item 9B to the City Council before tonight's meeting. The email is available for public review online and in the back of the room in our agenda packet. Presentations for tonight's meeting were also distributed. Thank you. All right, we're going to move on to item six, which is oral communications by members of the public. This is an opportunity for members of the public to address the council on anything that is within the purview of the council but is not being heard on tonight's agenda. Uh, if you would like to speak, please approach the podium. Yes, please. Uh, you'll have two minutes. We ask that you uh, state your name for the record. Um, oh, I'm sorry. We have three minutes. My apologies. Uh, state your name for the record if you would like it included uh, in the record. And thank you. Welcome. Hi. Uh, thank you for having me. My name is Alex Fowler. I worked with Lisa Murphy to install the pump track at McGregor Park. I also worked with uh, Larry Laurent for several years to maintain it. Uh, I noticed that there was a fallen tree from this winter storms, a uh, big eucalyptus tree that fell onto the pump track and um, that damaged the track. But then also the, uh, the crew that removed it, their equipment, uh, you know, the skid steers and excavators when they're removing the tree damages the track even further. Uh, and so then also uh, I noticed the, uh, the skate park, the pad, the concrete pad that the skate park is on, collects all the rainwater and funnels it right through the pump track. Um, and so I'm here to ask the city to commit funding to, you know, improve the drainage, um, as well as to direct city staff to evaluate the benefits of a paved surface. Uh, I see that the, the skateboarders also use the dirt pump track and the, the skateboard wheels uh, break, break it apart and cause further maintenance issues. Um, and so I just want to make sure that it's like an inclusive facility. We can asphalt it and, and, and that way it's, we don't have these issues anymore and it'll just be good for generations to come. Um, and that is it, really. Um, so yeah, I'm just asking if the city could Commit funding to it, and then I want to direct city staff to evaluate the benefits of a paved surface. Great, thank you. Do I need to sign this? I think that's up to you. Okay. Julia, right? Not required, but you are welcome to do so. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Hi, my name is Warren Cloppage. I live here locally, uh, not too far away uh, in Soquel. I uh, play uh, basketball at Jade Street Park, Park almost every day. And I have observed that uh, sometimes vandalism happens inside the men's restroom. I don't go into the female restroom, but that's another issue. Uh, but I like to uh, point out is uh, there are kids that play on the playground uh, at Jade Street Park and it's a little bit iffy if something like that is happening, uh, vandalism or uh, destruction of property. Um, something else uh, that I wanna bring up, uh, I'm not proud of that uh, to talk about, but it's necessary. This is the illegal drug dis distribution by a business here in Capitola Village that was done in the past. And uh, that was uh, Baybar in the past that uh, I, I talked already uh, to uh, some police officers about this, and they're they're informed who who the people are who are invo very involved in this. Thank you very much for listening. God bless you all. Take care. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Hi, thank you. 
Uh, good evening. My name is Nick Hart, and uh, I'm the founder of a local youth nonprofit called Flow. And uh, I'm kind of piggybacking on what Alex was talking about in regards to the McGregor Pump Track. Um, Flow leads several youth free youth programs uh, here throughout Santa Cruz County. And one of the programs that we run uh, is Flow Skate that happens at McGregor Skate Park. And uh, as well as skating, we also have uh, you know, bike uh, biking, but with the damaged pump track, we have not been able to use that um, since it's been damaged. Students have even tried to like rally and try and like, okay, can we, can we repair this in some way? Just too overwhelming of a task. Um, we've got some really, really talented riders that completely avoid the track now because it's just not, it's, it's not rideable. Um, what Alex and I are hoping to propose and to, to, to make, really kind of make a win-win-win situation is uh, we would love to make this a uh, far more inclusive park. A lot of our special needs friends um, that we work with, uh, we've done separate uh, programs with them and given them an incredible experience and, and opportunity to skate and to ride um, with assistance. With a paved pump track, we can open that up to everybody. Skateboarders, scooters, bikes, moms with strollers taking their kids around, kids in wheelchairs. It could be absolutely incredible. And... Uh, um, and, and a weatherproof and a weatherproof project of that as well. So, um, thank you for your guys' consideration and your time tonight. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Hello, uh, my name is Corey Osfor. I'm here to speak out in support of the pump track as well. Um, for those of you who aren't aware of what a pump track is, it's basically a roughly circular trail with a bunch of pumps in it. Um, it's mainly meant for bicycles, but they're also, accept they're also accessible when paved to pretty much anything with wheels. And uh, these are starting to pop up all around the county. They're a tremendous asset to the community. Uh, if you go next to Westside Pump Track or the one over in Watsonville that recently opened a few years ago, they are constantly in use by people of all ages. It's tremendously valuable. And uh, the, really the only big problem with pump tracks before was maintenance. As Fowler said, they tend to get torn up very easily, require a lot of attention. But uh, with the rise of paved pump tracks, most of these issues are remedied. They only need a little bit of maintenance once every few years instead of constant attention. So this one-time investment will really pay off for many years to come. and. Uh, in its current state, the pump track's not usable for its intended purpose. It's somewhat of a wasteful use of public land, in my opinion, that's highly visible from the freeway. So right now, it's not really doing us any good, and I would really like to see that brought back to life so that everyone can enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Evening, Council. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being here this evening as well in the Capitola community. Uh, my name is Kyle Josephson, and I'm a resident here in Capitola, and I'm here to speak about the pump track as well. Uh, I think that we're very lucky to have such a uh, great community asset here in Capitola that provides some great uh, recreational activities for all generations. And with the current state of the track being a bit deteriorated and uh, the long-term maintenance issues spoken about before, it seems like that a small investment can go a long way into providing a fundamental uh, opportunity for this track to continue being a great part of the uh, capital community. Uh, that's it for the evening. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Thank you, Marilyn Garrett. I don't know, pump tracks are for young, agile people like this, but as an old lady who just likes to go walking and have other activities in the park, uh, doesn't appeal to me. <laughs> um, at your last meeting, you approved automatic license plate readers. And I wanna thank Mr. Peterson for his no vote. I looked in the files I had about the surveillance state we're living in, and I came across some articles in the Good Times from 2014 
by John Malcolm. And I'd like to quote a little bit from it because I think it applies to the last meeting. These issues shouldn't be hashed out on the day of approval. There should be a public debate before funding is sought, says Nicole Ozer, policy director of technology and civil liberties for the Northern American, Northern California ACLU. Quote, what we're seeing in Santa Cruz is happening in a lot of communities around the country where there's a lot of federal funding being made available for surveillance technology, unquote. Because the money is coming from the federal government, it sometimes circumvents the normal debate and oversight that might occur in a budget process. So true. My friend who was here last time, she didn't have time to read her whole statement, but one of the figures she had was that approximately 1% of all these photos have taken, supposedly for finding stolen cars, um, only 1% are where they catch someone. And I was thinking, I was a public school teacher for 30 years, if I were 1% effective in teaching children, I wouldn't have been teaching. Um, activists also from the ACLU say outbursts have already been used to monitor the activities of political activists. Moreover, a lawsuit is pending against the city of San Francisco by Denise Green, who is handcuffed and held at gunpoint after a San Francisco police ALPR mistakenly identified her Lexus as stolen. The ACLU has also expressed fears that images could be used to track people. I think this needs to be revisited and have a large public discussion. Thank you, Ms. Garrett. We appreciate your comments. Any further public comment this evening? Hi, welcome. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kyle. Uh, I've been a resident of Capitola area for about three years now. And uh, what brings me here tonight is advocating to hopefully have some funding and some effort and energy taken towards our pump track. Uh, as everyone has said here tonight, um, we all enjoy cycling. We like to see uh, a little effort gone towards the, the current state of it right now, uh, being in disarray. Uh, it affects everybody. We all like to use uh, the facilities that are here in the city, and we would just appreciate it if uh, you could just consider that. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Last call for public comment? All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, we will move on now to staff and city council comments. We'll start with staff. Any comments? I don't think we have any comments this evening. All right. We'll move on to city council. Any comments on this end? Yeah. Council Member Clark, Council Member Morgan? Yeah. Um, was it yesterday, Tuesday, uh, we did our little ribbon cutting on our, uh, our B-cycle docking station, actually the one that's over on Cliff Drive. Um, and at first I just went for the ribbon cutting itself and just to see um, all the hard work that's been done by staff. And so thank you, staff. I had no intention of getting on a bike since it's been about 20 years, but I did and it was really fun. And so I just want to say if you get the opportunity um, to try out the B-cycle bikes, there are a ton of docking stations around town and within the county. So definitely try it out. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Peterson? Nope. Vice, no? Oh, Vice Mayor Brooks? Yeah. I too was at the ribbon cutting and guess what I got on a bike again today. So it was with the helmet. I found a helmet. 
just saying it was it was really exciting. So um, pretty cool to have those out there. Um, I just want to remind the community it is for 18 and over. They're not for our youth to to rent. And um, but it was a really easy process and to download the app. It was fun. Um, there are um, uh, there are uh, discounted rates or opportunities for folks to um, to use them if if it if they cannot afford to do so. Um, I'd also like to ask staff to um, ensure that our feminine hygiene uh, dispensers are filled regularly. Um, I, I've brought this up a couple of times, and every time I, I check, they are not. Um, and I know it's been council's direction to to um, continue to have those filled. Um, I'd also like to um, ask staff if they could respond regarding the pump truck at this time. Sure, I can just briefly tell council that I have been in discussion with a number of funders. Um, and we can bring back a little bit more options, a little bit more information kind of about what a paid pump track might look like, what it might cost, uh, I think during our budget process coming up here next month. So that's okay with the council. That's how I'd recommend proceeding. Great. Okay, thank you. Um, also, I'd be interested in maybe in our Friday update to receive some information on how our city can become a sister city. Um, I believe we're the only one in the county that is not set up um, to have a sister city, so I'd like to learn more about that. Um, I'm also interested in learning or knowing whether we can use our council dollars to buy gear, like as jackets and things that I've seen other, something more formal for us. Um, and yeah, that would be neat. I know I'm looking at my colleagues here to see if I'm getting consensus overall. Um, and then also I attended the RTC groundbreaking event today, and I just want to thank Kristen, our mayor, um, for her work on the project um, at Saturday. We haven't seen each other since the Saturday, and everything went really well. And because of her leadership on RTC and chairing that committee, um, we're really seeing great things take place. So thank you to our mayor for that. Um, and those are all my comments. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, we did have the groundbreaking today for the Highway 1 multimodal corridor project, bus on shoulder and auxiliary lanes. It's a mouthful every time you try to say it. Um, but that is why uh, we had the closure this past weekend uh, to for the demolition of the Capitola overcrossing. Eventually, there will also be the replacement of the Mar Vista overcrossing. There's going to be some construction on Highway 1. I know it's going to take our patience, um, but it's going to be great in the long run. And thank you all for your patience over the weekend. Uh, I know that there was a little bit of a, a traffic jam for a while, but uh, they were able to get the overcrossing demolished and the freeway opened um, earlier than they expected. So a lot of hard work to, to get that done. So thank you again, all of you, for your patience on that. I also want to take a moment to uh, congratulate and recognize uh, our Recreation Division Director, Nikki Bryant, and our Lifeguard Captain, Brendan Howard. Uh, this morning, I was invited to welcome the California Surf Life Saving Association to the city of Capitola. They're holding their spring meeting here. It's the first time they've ever um, held their meeting here in Capitola. We're relatively new members of the California Surf Life Saving Association, and it's a big deal that they decided to come here for their meeting. Uh, and so I know that, that Nikki especially put a lot of hard work into that, um, and I think it says a lot about... Uh, Nikki and Brennan and, uh, you know, our whole team, our whole city, that they decided to host uh, their meeting here. And I believe they'll be here tomorrow as well. And hopefully, um, you know, they'll be able to enjoy our beach and the beautiful weather that we're having. And if that's the case, it will be the safest our beach has ever been because there will be like 90 lifeguards on it. Um, so just congratulations to the hard work uh, to our staff in that regard. All right. Uh, no further comments? We will move on to our consent items uh, enacted by one motion uh, by the council, unless there's anything that any council member wants to discuss, question, or poll. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I'd be interested in polling item B, COE bylaws for 23-25 goals. I just had a quick question about that, if I can ask, and then we go can ahead. decide. Um, I thought... Uh, that the group actually generally presents the information. And I know that the, the um, climate action plan is a goal that we assigned for this year. And so I'm just curious whether, and I know 
Council Member Morgan, you sit on it. Is this something that generally gets presented to us rather than just in um, as a consent item? I don't think this has actually been done before. Yeah, that's what I thought. Unlike the Art and Cultural Commission, which has come and sometimes presented yeah. a work plan. So this is, to my recollection at least, is the first time that the COE's prepared a work plan and taken it to the council. I. I, I'll look to my colleagues, and I don't know if you want to discuss it now, Mayor Brown. Um, I'd be interested in hearing from the commission and kind of getting the background on where these goals came from and how we can support them. I read through it, um, but it would be nice to maybe have a little bit more direct um, input from the members themselves. Are you interested in, so, so pulling it and not voting on it until we hear from them, or do you want to, okay. That's fine. Okay, so I'll pull the item for... Uh, to be added onto, I guess, general government, and then we can vote on that to come back? Or what do you suggest? So I can just pull it and have it come on a future agenda, right? We don't need to vote to make it come back, or do we? Technically, you would, I mean, you could just pull it, and there would be no motion to approve it. So, and then the direction to staff would be to bring it back on a future agenda. I, I'm looking to my my fellow council members are here for consensus, if that's okay with everyone. Yeah, I actually have a neighbor who's on the commission, and he, he inquired about them coming and talking to us soon, and uh, so that would be awesome. Okay. I'd like to pull the item and right. to um, direct staff to come back. Thank you. Great. Any further question or comment on consent? I'll make a motion to um, approve consent items A and C. I can second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. That'll bring us to item 9A, potential ballot measures. And I will look to Chloe. Thank you so much, Mayor Brown and Council. Hi. Um, this is going to be a brief presentation on potentials for the coming ballot um, in November. So as you recall, uh, through your contract with EMC Research, the, the representatives from that firm presented polling um, results at the March 14th meeting. And just a very brief summary, the overall results um, that they, they pulled regarding several different options for a ballot measure um, were optimistic. Voters are generally optimistic and they believe in the city and the way that we're doing our jobs and are performing our functions. The majority of voters recognize a need for additional funding for the city. The top priorities of voters um, based on the survey were determined that maintaining public safety response, roads, sidewalks, and bike lanes, and the beach and new wharf were the top priorities of the voters polled. And ultimately, there was support above the, the regular threshold for renewing the expiring Measure F um, tax. And support for a potential bond measure was closer to the 50% um, range. And that sort of measure would, would require a supermajority. So that wasn't as promising. So it's just a brief, oh my god. I'm sorry to laugh. It's so small. I apologize. <laughs> it's, it's just like seems really silly. But this is our 10-year budget forecast prepared by Finance Director Malberg. Thank you. I did not prepare this myself. Um, but the gist is, and if you want to go to next slide, I think it will just pull up a graphic here. Yeah, if we want to focus in. So you've seen this in your packet, hopefully where you were able to read it. But the idea here is we have kind of a white and then a yellow and a green row the top most row is where we are now, assuming Measure F will expire in 2027, which is kind of operation normal. That's what's expected and what will happen if nothing further happens with the ballot measure. Um, the yellow rows in the middle are extending Measure F, if that were approved, so extending the quarter cent sales tax. How would that impact our, our general fund for the next 10 years? And then this last option in green is replacing Measure F with a new tax measure at the half percent. And so you see how the numbers change. And the, the general distinction I want to point out in the red box is, as you can see, we're doing okay 
for the very near future. But as you get into years 2027 and beyond, things start to look a little bit more concerning, especially under Operation Normal with the measure, with, um, excuse me, Measure F expiring in 2027. Now I do want to just pause and ask if our city manager wants to add anything. Okay, great. So we're going to, if there's questions, that's fine. So moving on, um, options, right? So we did the polling to see how, how much appetite is there in, in our likely voter poll regarding approving any kind of taxes. Now we kind of know where they're, where they're at. So what do we want to do? What does council directing staff to do? So there's two primary options as outlined in that forecast. Um, one is extending Measure F. So that would allow for about $1.1 million a year. Again, that would maintain the current general fund revenue of the existing tax beyond 2027. So that did, again, like I said, pull very favorably with 78%. I mean, that's, that's very favorably. Um, that's a high margin of support. And would still lead to some problematic potential budgets through 2030, which seems like a long time, but isn't really that far away. So second option, replacing Measure F with a new half percent sales tax. Understandably, that would double the revenue of general fund revenue, right? So $2.2 million. That would be adding over a million dollars in new general fund revenue. Uh, the language that would be kind of recommended if that were the direction council wanted to go would be using language such as replacing an existing tax, which could be more, um, that could probably garner more support than using language like approving a new tax. You're replacing something that already exists would be more palatable to a likely voters. And this, this would resolve the current long-term budget projections of having like deficit and having not as much in the general fund. So moving on, um, some other things to consider. Uh, we do know, staff does know of two official um, measures that are gonna be on the November ballot in our local area. So we, it look, there's a regional clean water and wildlife protection. I believe that's a bond as well. Par excuse me, parcel tax that would be on the ballot at, if council directs staff to move forward and to put a place a measure on the November ballot, this would be there as well. And uh, we did learn um, pretty recently that the central fire district is putting on a general obligation bond. Um, so that would also be on the ballot. And there's potential, this is a very new information, that the school district is also placing a bond on the measure. So it's always important to consider what is already, what are voters already gonna be looking at so that there's not too much of a distraction. So we wanted to be transparent about that, what we do know. So with that in mind, we're really, I'm just really here to hear from you and um, see what direction you wanna go in based on what I've just presented and what was in the staff report. So you have options. Um, I'm curious what your thoughts are. So replacing Measure F with a half percent measure, a simple extension of Measure F, if you're still interested in a general obligation bond, and I think we have some language we can, we can look into, but it's really just for me to hear a council's discussion on this. So thank you very much. And the questions I'm here, and um, city manager's here to answer. Thank you. We have questions. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, um, I was just curious if there was any polling done on how um, additional like bonds or tax measures on the November ballot would impact our percentage of approval? That's a great question. So not specifically regarding these additional um, the known factors. However, I, I would say that the research is done in such a way, even within the two ideas that council directed us to poll, for example, extending measure F or and a general obligation bond, the order of those questions were done very purposefully to show the impact of, you've already heard about a tax measure, how would you support a general obligation bond as well? And that there's clear impact in the, the results that that didn't necessarily help someone want to also approve an obligation bond. If that, I think that's- yeah, No, that, that's really close to what I was asking. You don't have any idea of like the percentage drop with approving two tax measures? Not off the top of my head, but we could look into it, absolutely. 
you, Chloe. Um, can you dis, uh, define replace? Um, what that means, what, how would that, when, mm -hmm. what years, and, and all that sort of stuff. If you can define the word replace for me. Thank That's you. a great question. And I think I know what you're um, asking. So that would mean upon approval by the voters, Measure F would go away and it would be replaced with measure whatever letter we get assigned for a half cent. So it would go into effect January 1st, 2025. So instead of measure F continuing to 2027, mm -hmm. this would essentially replace it effective January 2025 to start it. Exactly. So it's not a double dip of our um, constituents money or taxes. Exactly. Okay. And um, do we know what those numbers look like? What's a half cent in comparison to where we are right now with what our constituents pay for Measure F? Do we know the different differentiate? You know, is that 86 cents or, yeah, per household or per parcel or? That's a great question. I, I do not have the answer. Do you, Jamie? So in general, Capitola is actually a net sales tax attractor. So in other words, we receive more sales tax than our residents pay out by a factor of about three to four, depending on how you look at the numbers. So the increase, if you will, would be if it's $1.1 .1 million increase, if you figure the Capitola voters are paying between a third and a quarter of that, so that's maybe two hundred and fifty to $300,000 that Capitola residents would be paying. Those are very approximate numbers, but I think that kind of gets you in the ballpark. Okay, that brings me clarity because this, in fact, is a sales tax. It's not a direct tax like one would see, like on a bond measure, if like SoCal put something that it's on your like taxes. This is a tax that's spread not just to our community members, but people who live throughout the county and visitors and, and tourists. Is that correct? Yes, perfect. Thank you. Those are all my questions. Questions? Yeah, go ahead. Can we go, go back to the half percent versus the quarter percent on the polling? So the Measure F got 78%? Yes, so I want to be clear. Um, at the time that the contract was made and that EMC Research did their polling, they'd been directed to poll regarding a extending Measure F and the potential of a general obligation bond. So there was no official polling done regarding a half cent, correct? And I thought that I heard you said something that was only 50%. That was the general obligation bond. Gotcha. Yes. Yeah, that was my question. Thank you. Okay. Um, I did some quick math. And so if based on what you're saying, the $250,000 a year for all Capitola residents, um, it looks like that's about $25 a year more per resident. And that's like six cents a day. So that's what we would be asking for an increase if we were to, to replace. Um, since measure, so I guess we would be in the replacement, I'm trying to determine. So measure F is a general sales tax. It just goes into the general fund. And I'm assuming the replacement would be as well. So this would require a majority vote, not a two thirds vote. Okay. Uh, okay. I think that was my only question. Just confirming that the replacement would be a general tax. General tax. All right. Uh, any other questions before we go to public comment? None? Okay. All right. Uh, we will open this up for public comment if there's any member of the public that would like to address the council on this item. Welcome back. Hi. Um, Marilyn Garrett, I listened to the Board of Supervisors meeting and live in the county in Aptos. And taxes are going up all the time, homeowner taxes, sale taxes, which affect those uh, least able to pay. And we hear of the rich and corporations paying virtually nothing. There's something the matter with this inequity. Also, about half our taxes go to the military industrial complex and wars, and that means it's being stolen from the counties and cities that could otherwise use that money. 
some of the figures are astounding, like I should have some of the figures, but it's like hunger could end with redirecting the military budget. That's one thing. Also, the county at their last meeting, looking at their general, the budget, there's been so much spending for the disasters, the weather disasters. It's huge. And the county's not getting reimbursed by FEMA. So that's another problem. And I'm convinced that the really um, extreme catastrophic weather conditions are not all natural disasters. An excellent source of that is listening to geoengineeringwatch.org and watch the video of the dimming. That's Dane Wigington. And he, it's all factual. He lists the patents that Lockheed Martin and Raytheon have to alter the weather, weather warfare. So that's uh, another thing to in investigate and to stop these weather intervention operations. I understand the state of Tennessee just enacted something that's a model to stop these operations. So those, I remember hearing an interview with someone from Share the Wealth campaign. I thought, gosh, that sounds good. Share the wealth. I mean, I didn't make millions as an elementary school teacher, but some do. And the last point is some of the money, like going for this automatic vehicle license, reading cell towers, I feel is a poor, dangerous use of public money. Thank you. Thank you. Any further public comment on this item? Seeing none, we'll bring it back to council for discussion and a vote. Any comments? We'll start down at this end. Council Member Clark, any comments? At this time, you're always welcome to make comments later as well. Okay. Uh, council Member Morgan? Okay. Vice Mayor Brooks? I have two follow-up questions. I'm looking at the proposed potential language and just have some questions about that. Um, so first I'll say that I'm in favor of the replacing of Measure F with the new half cent percent sales tax. So it makes sense. I think we have to be really um, intentional about what replace means. So regarding the potential language, um, is the potential language currently in order of um, when we received the poll results, there was uh, what was important yes. rate. Is that in this order? Yes, so thank you for asking, and I maybe should have clarified earlier. This language um, was worked on with staff, our city attorney, and EMC research based on the polling results as much as we could base them on, seeing as they, they polled the quarter cent. But um, the priorities I briefly mentioned earlier, they are here. Um, public safety and emergency services, repair potholes, maintain streets, sidewalks, bike lanes, beaches, the new wharf, and recreation programs for youth. And it goes on, but those are in order of how important they were shown to by the city, excuse me, by the, <laughs> the likely voters in the city. Um, is it important to say when the replacement will happen? What was the feedback from our poll AC M2 or whatever? What are they called? Yeah, yeah, EMC Research. I know who you meant. Um, I don't believe we're legally required to go into the specifics of when the replacement happens, but you'll notice um, the language here does indicate exactly what it is replacing. So replace its quarter percent sales tax approved by voters in 2016. So that's very specific and kind of, I believe, needs to be in there. I I, I would agree with our, our council member that it's not specific on when the replacement happens. Mm -hmm. I think that's just really important for our voters to know that it's not a double dip. It, and so I see our city uh, attorney. Yeah, so along with this will be an impartial analysis in the ballot, which I will write, um, which will explain exactly that, that the quarter cent would, this would, replace the quarter cent and we can say an effective date 
in there. We're limited by number of words on our ballot measure. And it's not just number of words. It's sort of trying not to put too much, too many concepts in one ballot measure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of concepts. And along that line, you are not tonight being asked to vote on this specific language. It'll come back to you in a resolution. My guess is in June. June. Yeah. We have time. When you vote um, to put it on the ballot. So, can you tell me a little bit then more about the ten years and where that comes from? Yes. And so this is another element that we're more than happy to have feedback from council on the 10 years. So I think generally, and we did speak with the research, the experts on this, it is positive to have an end date that makes voters feel comfortable and not feel like they're being asked to approve something in perpetuity. That can also be targeted by potential opposers of the tax and used to discredit. Um, the 10 years, um, I do have the language, if you're interested, of when um, voters last approved Current measure F, and it was around a ten. It was in a ten-year time frame, so that was like a proven um, time frame. However, I will also add that the EMC reps mentioned that a, you know an eight or nine-year time frame can be attractive to voters because it doesn't, for whatever reason in our brains, that doesn't sound as long. Ten years sounds could sound long to folks, so that was some feedback we did receive. Um, so it's really like like our city attorney said, it's up for to your discretion and not necessarily that we need official approval now, but if, if you do have strong feelings on that, it would be helpful to know. I don't have strong feelings. What I have strong feelings about is um, the multiple other ballot measures that are going to be on the November ballot, um, and I definitely want this to shine through. Mm -hmm. And so I'd be curious in knowing what the, I, I know bonds are different than the others and different than this, and if there's timelines and how that all adds up mm -hmm. and what that would look like with this language in comparison to like what they're proposing. Mm -hmm. um, I think that would just help us kind of create better and stronger potential language for our voters to, to understand. Um, my last question, I always say it's the last question, but I lie. They, they, they keep Many as you want. Um, I believe that there is a new bill of something coming up and I was hoping our city manager, uh, city attorney can speak to that. Well, there are a few. Um, potentially, uh, well, they'll be on the ballot. One is a CBRT measure, the um, California Business Roundtable measure, which would really dramatically alter uh, city finance. It would primarily apply to charges that are not taxes. So it would um, change what a city can determine what city, what charges a city can levy on residents. So for instance, it would change um, the city's ability to levy fees for um, whatever use of a facility um, or uh, rates, things that don't necessarily have to go to the voters. The methodology for computing those would be changed and it would put, it would require that they all be reasonable and could not exceed the minimum cost to the city of providing the service. And it would put the onus on the city to prove that it was reasonable. So it could it, it could really um, impact the city's ability to sort, a city's ability to sort of function financially. Um, and it also is applies retroactively. So any, um, fees and rates adopted after, I think it's January of 2022, that did not comply with the ballot measure would have to be readopted. Um, so the League of California Cities is vehemently opposing it. Um, it would, it does some other things, but that's really the, the gist of what could really change municipal finance. Um, in addition, there are some countermeasures put on one is um, ACA 1, it's Constitutional Amendment 1, and it would reduce the threshold for special taxes and bonds for, I think it's for affordable housing and infrastructure. From right now, those require a two-thirds vote, so a 66.3, 66 vote. Um, uh, it would reduce those to 55% if that passes. Um, and there's one more that I'm not remembering it, but that is the primary countermeasure that was put on. Mm -hmm. Can you put that in 
layman's terms on how a CA1 would potentially affect this potential measure? Or it wouldn't affect this if the council, I know that um, some cities are considering bond measures for infrastructure. Um, it, it may, if ACA1, it may make it passes, it would make it easier for a future bond measure, measure for infrastructure to pass because it would only need a 55% of the vote. And do either one of those or this in general apply to online sales or do we need to identify that a increase in sales tax applies to online sales? Do we have, does, or let me answer, ask that question differently. Does this apply to online sales for the city? I think it does. And do we need to ensure that? Because I know we had some questions before. It does. It does. To the extent that online sales providers are complying with California state law, uh, it does. And so we do receive our district taxes from Amazon, for example, and other big online retailers. Right. Um, I, I guess... I, the direction I would just start with is that staff, um, I'm in favor of staff moving forward with looking into the 10-year comparison to the other ballot measures and just making sure that we stand out on this potential language. Um, and I think that was the only, you answered all my other questions. So thank you. All right, Council Member Peterson. Thank you. Um, I want to say that I'm also in support of uh, replacing Measure F with the half cent or half percent, uh, yeah, half cent tax. Um, and I want to explain um, why I want to do that is because um, even if we just extended Measure F, uh, we would be running a deficit for years uh, 2028, 2029, and 2030. Of approximately a million dollars so this isn't um, asking for additional funding to support really growth of the city or anything like that it's just basically maintaining the status quo of services that we are here to offer and are required to provide for our community um, I would also say that um, regarding the 10-year I see on the 10-year uh, budget forecast that in um, 20 33 without an extension of measure F we would be um, back into not running a deficit so I would um, suggest we consider moving it to nine years and only requesting from the voters what we specifically need based on our 10-year budget forecast um, to keep the services that we have um, I think that would be yeah that, that's what I would recommend thank you thank you um, I'm also in favor of the replacing. Um, I think when people ask even now about city services, about improvements in the city, saying we don't have the money is the last thing anyone wants to hear. They hate hearing it. I've had people literally tell me you can't keep saying that the city has no money. So I think it's really incumbent on us to um, move forward with asking the voters to replace Measure F with a half cent sales tax. Uh, in order to ensure that we have a balanced budget that allows us to maintain, if not improve, our level of service here in the city. Because as it is, I, I would like to stick with the 10 years because it, with inflation, the costs are going up, construction costs, costs of goods and services, we don't know what it's going to look like in 10 years. That's a 10-year budget forecast. But if we make this a nine-year um, tax and then in year seven everything tanks again, we're really going to wish we had that extra year. And so I, I do think we should stick with, with 10 years um, but I am in favor of asking the voters to replace Measure F with a half cent sales tax that would begin in January of 25. Um, I think it, I think it's what we need to do. I think it's important that we take every action that we can to try to ensure that we have a balanced budget, and this is one of them. Um, any further comments? Yeah, I too uh, like the half cent sales tax. Having $2.2 .2 million is a lot better than one. However, I, I think we have to be cautious that with the other bonds out there and the other things going on, that we know replacing Measure F is, sounds like a pretty much for sure thing. And we need to look at what it will be going after the half percent. Um, just a thought I was having. I think that it's something for us to uh, 
we do a little more research on it and uh, see what we can come up with. One factor to keep in mind is that Measure F expires in 2027. So if this will measure were to fail this time around, we'd have one more shot before the expiration to just do a renewal. So I don't know if that helps assuage your concerns to some degree, but there is there would be one more opportunity. I'd hate to not get anything. But yes, just just the thoughts going through the mind. Um, I'm also in favor. Um, I'm fine with the 10 year option. Um, unless, it, I guess maybe this would need to be followed up by a little bit more in like individual information on the other bonds that are potentially going to be on there. Um, you know, how, how long are those going for things like that? What are the costs? Um, I think that might be helpful. Um, and I'm pretty good with the language other than, yeah, just maybe stating when, um, oh, I guess we're not really talking about that today, but just being clear as to when that could be starting for our citizens. Um, and yeah, I think that's all. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Any further comments? No? So this was just direct, oh yeah, go ahead. Thanks, I just wanted to, um bring up again the nine year versus 10 year, I um, would be happy to vote for either, but I would just um, want to add a little bit to that with, um, I think a lot of people are struggling at this time, even in Capitola and with three other, uh, you know, requests for government funding, the nine year may sit better, but that's all I wanted to add. Thank you. Thank you. I don't think we're voting on this, correct? This is just direction to staff. Yeah, you don't need to vote. What, one of the things I was just going to talk a little bit about maybe is sort of what next steps would look like. And what staff would do at this point is probably do some reach outs, um, have some conversations with some of the other jurisdictions that are proposing tax measures to get a better understanding of what they're looking at. Maybe have some conversations with people who, um, you know, might have concerns about a tax measure and find out what their concerns might look like. Um, and then ultimately come back to you and you know, Council Member Peterson has has a point about the nine years versus ten years, and there is, as the pollster said, you know, that extra year. Sometimes people put like unreasonable value on that last dollar, right? When you go from or the last penny, when you go from nine ninety nine to ten, um, and 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 so it's something to look about and maybe just keep an open mind about as we do the conversations. You know, when we come back and we look at it, we might say, hey, you know, that might be a, something we should consider or. 10 years is a good number. All right. Thank you. Yeah, I would I would add to that that if, you know, if we do get more information on the other ones that are going to be listed, if that is going to make it more attractive, then I, you know, if we can get 10 years out of it, I'd be glad to get 10 years. But if we can see that the numbers will look better or, or it will be more attractive, then I'd like to see if we can kind of do like some algorithm of how that would look for us. No, no, no. Any other comments? No? All right. Does staff have sufficient direction? Do. All right. Great. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to move on to our final item this evening, item 9B, Wharf Resiliency and Public Access Project Update. And I will welcome Jessica. All right. Good evening, Mayor and Council members. I'm here this evening again to speak about the wharf. Next slide. So for anyone who may not be aware, we currently have a wharf project going on. Um, the wharf resiliency and public access project, key project elements are widening the wharf, uh, doing fixes, deck replacement, restaurant, restaurant, excuse me, restroom additions um, to ensure the wharf's long-term resilience. We have had Cushman contracting on site since September of 2023, and we continue to plug along. We have completed the widening, the building removal, the replacement of the stairs, and we are very close to completing repairs to the head of the wharf that was completely thrashed both in January and December of 2023, and then we'll be wrapping up the project with replacing all of the railing, putting on additional amenities, and then doing improvements to the very um, base of the wharf. That first bent has not been addressed yet. So the last time I was here, we asked for a budget amendment to... Um, 
complete work under the buildings, building removal, things of that nature. Um, I have the estimated amounts there that were also included in the staff report and the actual amounts that came out of those change orders with Cushman Contracting. So just a little bit of an explanation on why some of these numbers are different. The uh, building demolition also included content removal of both of the buildings. Um, that ended up being really extensive, especially in the Wharf House restaurant. If you've ever been in that restaurant, you might know why. Um, and there is quite a bit to um, remove and remediate before being able to return those contents. Um, the repair work under the buildings was very close to what was estimated uh, during the last council meeting. The head of the wharf repairs was significantly um, increased. Uh, there was a lot of pilings that, while they did not need to be replaced, needed to be shifted back to where they were to make plumb at a cost. Um, all of the deck, much of the decking was not being, it was a lot. Basically, we can go very more into details of like why that was off, but basically it was thrashed heavily both in January and that was an estimate to what those repairs were going to be and then again in December. Next slide, please. Oh, so I'm sorry. So the current deficit based on change orders that have been executed with Cushman Contracting is $125,000. Other known project expenses, these are projected costs, so these are very close but not exact costs to what they're going to be at the end are additional um, repairs to the wharf that have to do with additional piling replacements, stringer replacements. Stringers are directly under the wharf decking. Um, over the years, we have replaced the decking quite a few times and not related to major repairs in the wharf, and those things were Swiss cheese, a lot of them. And so more needed to be replaced than we had originally anticipated. Again, those displaced piles, both at the head of the wharf, but in other locations of the wharf due to our storm damage, and then a lot of missing hardware um, from the existing end of the wharf that it definitely wasn't constructed in a uniform manner, and also over the years, things get displaced. Um, so the extending project costs that we are aware of at this time to the base project of the wharf resiliency project is approximately $180,000. Um, so there are other potential modifications that can be made to the uh, project at this time. Some of them are more or less mandatory with the utilities. Um, the utility boxes were attached to the buildings, which are now gone. And so those need to be reconfigured to have utilities out at the end of the wharf. Um, so the estimated cost for those, including um, hookups for potential interim and perhaps permanent uses is approximately $100,000. So what that includes is the utilities that are already out there that need to be addressed in some way to be in a box and accessible in the future, and then three multi-utility hookups for temporary use. So those hookups would include electricity, water, and sewer surfaces. Um, two are proposed where the building footprints were, and the other one is proposed at the base of the wharf near the restrooms. Um, there's a potential cost savings here if we wanted to just do two hookups instead of three of approximately $15,000. We'll get into the total costs of these modifications towards the end of the presentation. Uh, these modifications would be completed by Cushman as they are already out there doing this type of work. Um, I'm going to invite uh, Katie Herlihy up here to speak a bit about the restroom as there is some history to the exterior of this um, facility that is currently installed at the base of the wharf. Okay, thank you, Jessica. Um, good evening, Mayor and Council. I just wanted to bring some clarity to the process with uh, just the Planning Commission review over time of the bathroom. So on this slide, the image on the top left um, is the option that was first brought to the Planning Commission back in May of 2023. Um, this type of bathroom is called the Exolu bathroom. And one other option was brought to the Planning Commission. Um, this is the vertical siding, and the other was horizontal wood siding. On one of the options, it didn't show the siding going around all four sides of the building. Um, during that Planning Commission meeting, there was a condition placed on the permit, um, which stated that we shall consider alternative full exteriors for the Exolu restroom structures for increased compatibility. Um, the discussion at that meeting was really in depth about not only this bathroom, but the Portland bathroom that was at the end of the wharf. Um, my interpretation of the condition was that staff modify the entire exterior of the restroom from the wood finish to another finish that was more compatible. 
Um, in hindsight, the wording of that condition, I wish it was more specific. I wish we described it better and really kind of went more in depth. Um, the second image is showing the Exalu bathroom as it stands today out on the wharf. The exterior was modified to a flat panel finish with a, in a light blue color. The idea was that the change would be more compatible with the surroundings, including the colorful Venetians and also the homes up along Cliff Drive. Um, so then um, the, once, once the Exalu was installed out on the wharf, we had quite a few calls and questions about the, the bathroom. So um, at our May 27th planning commission meeting, the, we brought it, I brought it back to the commission and Fuse Architecture was working on the final plans for the wharf enhancements. And during that meeting, we um, brought back the image you're seeing at the bottom left. This is a pressed bamboo option. And then we also brought back paint options. And ultimately, the Planning Commission asked that um, the City Council consider moving forward. They're, they understand there's additional cost and move forward, ask, request, um, recommended that City Council move forward with the pressed bamboo. If we could go to the next slide, please. So here are some other options in terms of color. This would definitely be a savings um, in overall cost. And next slide, please. And this is just the image of it as it stands today in the blue and the thought process behind it kind of blending with the Venetians. Um, so with that, I'll let Jessica carry on. Thank you. Um, so next steps with this project, there is also the Capitola Wharf Enhancement Project that we have discussed in previous meetings. These are some modifications of this, uh, the wharf that were required to be completed by Cushman, notably the uh, lighting and the electrical work and some of the plumbing work will be done by Cushman as they're out there doing similar tasks. And then the other elements of that project will be procured and installed separately outside of the Cushman contract. Uh, that project is fully funded. Um, additional potential change orders are the utility modifications and the restroom modifications mentioned at, earlier in the presentation, and we expect this project to be completed sometime this summer. Next slide. Um, so here we have our funds allocated to date. The, two, uh, the, def the current deficit based on change orders already executed, our additional known project expenses, the temporary utility hookups, which again would be three two near the footprints of the uh, old buildings and one near the restroom. Wood cladding on the restroom is estimated at approximately $25,000, which gives us a funding gap at this time with all those proposed modifications of $430,000. Next slide, please. There are some potential cost savings that have been identified by staff. Uh, one of them, as mentioned before, is reducing the temporary utility hookups from three to two, proposing just to keep the two out at the uh, head of the wharf where the building footprints were, to not modify the restroom exterior, and then also to remove the vehicle runners from the scope. And there's um, that would give us a projected deficit of $335,000. Next slide, please. So if you don't recall the vehicle runners, because they have not really been highlighted very often when discussing this project, these are eight foot pre-trilled uh, fiberglass reinforced plastic sheets um, from Bents 1, so the base of the wharf out to 50, so where approximately where the boats used to be stored. Um, the idea of these runners was to have protection for the wharf from rolling out the dumpsters from the buildings because that caused a lot of damage over the years. And so that was the primary, primary purpose of these runners. Um, they also would serve to delineate the drive aisle now that we have a wider wharf and there, we still anticipate vehicles going down there to drop boats and that kind of thing or any businesses that might end up out there. And then it would also facilitate the easier passage of those using wheeled items on the wharf, though I will say with the new decking that is less of an issue now than it has been in the recent past. Um, these sheets are already procured. They are sitting out at the wharf, um, but they are $35,000 to install, and they are definitely something that can be installed later. Like I said, they're pre-drilled, and so it's not a heavy lift to install those at some other time when perhaps we need them more because there are dumpsters or we, we can't roll over the deck boards as well as we could on year one versus year 10, um, but those are something we can easily store at the yard. Um, and we can indicate the vehicle path by signage, which is how it was previously prior to the project. Next slide. 
Um, so this is location of vehicle runners. It is difficult to see on this, but if you look at the bottom left, that is the restroom building there at the base of the wharf. And so it's on that upper portion um, delineating a drive aisle away from the existing building. Next slide. Um, so with that, the staff recommendation is on the screen. This is also the uh, gate design approved by Planning Commission at their last meeting. Um, the tile work there, uh, the pretty um, kelp is not the exact depiction that is being completed by an artist that was recently approved at was that just this Tuesday at, <laughs> at Art and Cultural Commission? So this is a, a, a very good but not completely accurate um, depiction of what we should expect the entrance of our wharf to be in a, in a few months. With that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Uh, we'll start with questions at this end. Any questions? Councilmember Peterson? Thank you. Yeah. Um, would the uh, vehicle runner extend the length of the wharf? Is that, am I understanding that correctly? So it's from the base of the wharf to where the boats used to be, so not quite to the end of the wharf. Okay, interesting. Um, and then I do have other questions. Oh, for the um, utility hookups. I noticed those are for temporary use is what are the chances that those are useful or usable for long-term use like is this a hundred thousand dollars we're going to spend and then it's going to be useless in two years because we're doing something else or so the intention of their placement was for temporary use just kind of looking ahead what would be the most useful location for them to be now they definitely be used for permanent use if the idea was to do those same type of temporary uses permanently if that makes sense so no they're not like meant to like burn out in 10 years like they're very much permanent hookups, but they were designed and chose those utilities in the way that we anticipated them being used in the shorter term. Right. And um, I guess they can be modified to some extent if like the layout changes or we're not going to have to completely redo it if depending on whatever we do for the long term plan. Is that right? Correct. It, they wouldn't sustain like a building. You know, but if it's a trailer oh. versus a truck versus a something smaller, that those would be able to be used. Okay, thank you. Um, and do we have a cost for uh, repainting the bathroom? A cost estimate for that? So it's UV resistant epoxy paint. So the materials are not that expensive. My guess is it's under ten thousand dollars, but that is very much a rough estimate. Okay, likely under ten thousand dollars. Okay, I think. Those are all my questions for now. Thank you. Thank you. Vice Mayor Brooks. Thank you. Um, so I guess the my question is around the budget and really where we're, I, I'm trying to think back to what we have in our remaining budget and what we really have to spend and knowing that there's going to be more things. This is what we anticipated with this project, right? More costs. It's going to keep coming. And I just think like overall, for us to give direction in terms of like what's going to be the cap right where how much do we have to spend or can do we get to continue to spend to be making these adjustments and i think we need to be really clear with our appointed planning commissioners in in this and being real about you know how much we can we can we can continue to spend on mishaps of you know the side walls for the bathrooms or getting rid of things or adding things. I just want to be really mindful of that. So I'm looking to our city manager for some input here. So I may have, may have misunderstood the question. I thought you were initially were asking kind of what would be the source for the funding, but I think maybe... It's two part, yeah. Okay. What's the source and how much do I really have to spend in this year's budget and the next year's budget? And, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking at a strategic plan here for, you know, I can, I want to give the war $3 million to be, to be the best, but I want us to be really mindful of what I don't see here is like our budget and what we've approved and what we've made our goals for, for the next years and so forth. So how much do we really have to spend? Where's the money coming from? And potentially how much do we have left after spending this? So three pointed question. So the proposal to fund the $430,000 included a number of different sources. One was the generator project that we recently completed here in the upper lot where we now have backup power. So next time we lose power during a council meeting, we don't get to go home. 
there was some extra funding in that. Um, in addition, the Stockton Avenue Bridge, you may recall, Council put $350,000 into that pro project. In addition, we got $500,000 for the Stockton Avenue Bridge through the assistance of, of Senator Laird. And staff thinks that we very probably are going to end up in a very, very probably going to have a very expensive project at the end of the day for Stockton Bridge. We're not sure whether or not there's going to be a viable half million dollar project. So we're suggesting that we can make $140,000 available from that source. And then in the facilities reserve, there's a balance of a little over $400,000 and we could use $200,000 uh, for the work. So those are the proposed sources of funding. Um, you will recall that kind of with the goal process that we went through, we were essentially down to our $500,000 fund buffer uh, in our general fund. Uh, so there's no, there was no more general fund kind of that staff was prepared to recommend. I think embodied in your question potentially was, is this it? Like, are we going to be back in front of you asking for more for the wharf? And so that's the conversation the public works director and I have had. And the answer is, this is it. That, when <laughs> that is the intention. I will say with large public works projects, there is always a cleanup at the end every single time. Wow. Hopefully it's only $20,000. That, that is the intention with this, is this, and we've made that very clear with getting estimates from the contractor and budgeting other items that this is the intent, is this, is this the last time we're coming here asking for a sizable amount of money? Okay, so, so let me count, count the pots of money here. So generator project, you didn't give me a number on that, what were, oh, 90, 90K. Um, the Stockton Avenue, we have 350 and 500 is Senator Laird expecting the 500000 that he's given to go to the Stockton Avenue project? So the, the project right now, the entire Stockton Avenue bridge has a balance of 770000 mm -hmm. So with the transfer of $140,000 of general fund, it would remain 630000 So that would include the five hundred k allocated from the state, from Senator Laird, and $130,000 of city general. Money does not move. And we're essentially borrowing from the 350 that we've already decided on for Stockton Ave. So fundamentally, we're saying we're pausing on that project because we're taking away from the 350,000 that we've allocated towards it. Um, and then facilities, where did you come up? So we had $400,000. Where did you come up with the 200K for that? Like, what are we removing? So the facilities fund is intended to sort of be a fund that's used to help take care of our buildings are built structures. So we use that to redo roofs, pay for improvements in here, things along those lines. We built up a balance of 432,000. The wharf is a facility. Um, and so it was making an allocation of the 200,000 from that fund to sort of close the gap. Um, I'm not pretending any of these sources of funds are easy. I mean, these are hard choices. Um, but obviously the wharf is a priority for us and getting the project done is a priority for us. So I don't, I understand these are hard choices and these are hard things to, to decide. Well, yeah. And I don't know, I don't know that it's hard. I think transparency is really important for our community to know where we're pulling funds from and what we're going to be putting on the back burner so that we can open up funds to complete these projects. Um, going back to facilities, Will the remaining two hundred and thirty-two thousand dollars be used to support any of the um, uh, short-term uh, fixes on the wharf at the end of the wharf? Because we're right now have a survey out on what we want to do. Where will those funds come from? That's certainly a possibility. We haven't identified the full costs or what the costs might look like for a short-term temporary uses. Mm -hmm. um, but that is a potential possibility. So we need to keep in the back of our minds of where we're going to pull it more money out. And so the generator fund is empty. There's a little bit left in Stockton Avenue facilities. And so my last question is for Jessica. When you say closing costs, you're anticipating $20,000 is what you just said? 
Definitely under $100,000. Like I said, these really <laughs> large... No, I know. And then yeah. that's difficult, because, but these really large projects yeah. often have yeah. cleanup at the end, just like the last changer we did. And then I came back today, say, actually, we're, you know, $100,000 off. Those, that's really real. And I wouldn't want to say, yes, this is the last time I come back to you. And then when I come back with the notice of completion, I don't want it to be a surprise. Yeah. No, I, yeah. I appreciate your honesty because we appoint our planning commissioners who then give you direction on projects. And, you know, the sky's the limit when we, when, when you're on planning commission on projects. And so I just want to be clear to my point, to the person I've appointed, like, this is how much we have and this is where we're going and what we can expect. So, um, okay, those questions, we were just still on questions, weren't we? Thank you. Those were all my questions. Questions? Council Member Morgan? Oh, Council Member Clark? Yeah, thanks for the staff and... City Council Member Brooks for outlining where we can get these um, we can get these funds. I just think it's important. We're, we're almost to the finish line. We need to push forward and uh, and see this through. So save my my other comments for after, later. Yes, I did have a couple questions. Um, yes, I wanted to ask about the paint. So thank you. Um, how much it might cost to repaint the bathrooms in lieu of the wood cladding um then so then there's utility hookups i know we kind of budgeted for either two or three the third one being at the base of the wharf and what like what would those be used for at the base of the wharf the same type of like temporary, temporary okay okay sorry i didn't know if there's like something that needed it um and then i guess i think that was oh I was unclear about the, can you bring up the thing from the report about, um, from the Stockton Bridge project, the amount that the 140, we would be taking that from that project. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. And, and the 630 remaining if approved by us at a later date to continue the project? Like, will that immediately halt the project? So right now we're in an engineering phase of the project. I'm going to give you all the information I have about it, and then I'll look over at Jessica and see whether I did it right. Um, but we're in the engineering phase of the project. And the idea was that we were going to fund diverters to yeah. potentially protect those legs of the bridge. It may or may not be a feasible project. It may be that at the end of the day, the only feasible long-term project is a clear span bridge. And so right now we have the funding to complete the engineering work and that'll get us to the next phase then. And beyond that, I need to turn to my public works director. That's correct. So the intention of the amount that we got from Senator, or sponsored by Senator Laird was to complete this engineering study, complete design projects and build diverters. If it turns out we can't build diverters, we can still use that fund to do a different capital project. So we're not losing any money in that way. Um, and it's highly likely that that's where we're going to end up. Okay. And then I guess in regards to the cleanup costs, why wouldn't that be considered in the like original bid for the project? I guess maybe when I mean cleanup costs, it's just there's always something where I estimate that the ed changer is going to be $100,000 and it ends up being $103,000. So it's just things that when you actually... Just like loose ends yes. and stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. I think those are all my questions. Thank you. Really appreciate your work. I, I have one follow-up. Um, you said that the $500,000 from our senator can be used on another capital campaign project. Did you mean that, or do you mean it can only be used on Stockton Bridge? I'm sorry, a different capital project for the bridge. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. I do sorry. not want the community to think yeah. that we can yeah, yeah, shift five hundred thousand yeah. dollars to to another project. Thank you. All right. I have a couple quick questions, um, and one is kind of unrelated, but now I'm curious. When you're referring to a clear span bridge, you're referring to a replacement of Stockton Bridge that doesn't have any barriers to debris flow underneath it, correct? And that would be the reason for replacing that bridge? Correct. Okay, thank you. Um, the hookups we're referring to, the bathroom that's already there, is that already hooked up? So we're talking about two or three in addition to that? Or correct. Okay. Um, the CWEP improvement items, those are all paid for? The installation's all paid for. We don't expect any more change orders in that regard, correct? 
So that project has a $650,000 budget consisting of monies from the city and then monies from the fundraiser. And the whole scope of that project fits within that budget. It's completely funded. Yes. So we don't expect any more cost overrides in that regard. This is all okay. Um, and then this is kind of just more hopeful, fun stuff. Is there any chance that we expect that this project will be done by the Wharf to Wharf on July 28th? Likely not. Perhaps right. shortly after, but July is would be very, very ambitious. <laughs> Let's make it a goal. <laughs> it would be fun. There was another hopeful note that we did strike in the staff report, mm -hmm. um, is that we are still working with Cal OES and FEMA on some recovery. So there is a possibility that some of these costs can be offset. I think it's not insignificant possibility. Um, we didn't really want to highlight it because at this stage it's not a certainty, but... If we want to strike hopeful notes, uh, there is the possibility that some of these funds could be offset by Cal OES due to the damages we got this this December. And then one one final question: If the cleanup loosens, I think our authority for city manager to make change orders without coming to the council is what twenty five thousand dollars. Well, I think the authority actually is higher. The problem is, is that we'd be out of budget. Uh, and so oh, for the total project, yeah, so so for example, if you guys authorized us up to 430 and then took, you know, two items off of our kind of cost reduction list, we may be able to clean it out without having to come back to council. Um, or if we authorized right now for you to take another $20,000 out of the facilities reserve. And then if it's more than that, you'd have to come back to us. But otherwise, we'd authorize you to move forward so we can just be done. Yeah, the one thing is, is though you do, the council does need to close the project out, right? Isn't there a formal notice of completion that the council files? Yes, there is. I would say if we were fully in budget, that'd just be a consent item, though. Yes. <laughs> a little bit of time. That's <laughs> Worth considering. All right. Any further questions? Okay. Seeing none, we will open this up to public comment. Are there any members of the public that would like to address the council on this item? Welcome. Uh, good evening, uh, Mayor Brown and Council. Um, I wanted to uh, thank the, uh, the Council, um, Jamie, Jessica, Katie, City staff, and the community for working together and supporting the Wharf Enhancement Project. Um, this has been a long project process and um, with many community meetings and over a thousand uh, survey results and responses. Um, CWEF's main goal is to work with the community and was to listen to the enhancements that they wanted fund, funded by their donations. Um, these enhancements that Fuse Architects has illustrated um, is going to make the wharf absolutely amazing. It's going to be including new lighting, benches, tables, trash receptacles, viewing stations, a new fish cleaning station, and some mosaic art features that Kathleen Cressetti um, and other local artists who have worked with her have designed. Um, the final phase of the enhancement and these artistic features, and we wanted to make sure and that the community had an opportunity to participate in that, um, to bring that to together, to um, have an opportunity for the community to come together. We needed a place to assemble those. Um, we reached out to Marlon Geyer and Brian Kirk at the mall, and they have donated a public space for us to use, and the city has reached, reached an agreement on so the community come together and put together these mosaic art pieces so that everybody feels like they're a part of the whole project together. Um, and with that, you know, we'll make sure, um, I know the city will be doing their notification, but we as a group will be reaching out to, you know, senior centers, uh, the mod in the mall, um, the schools and um, other local agencies to make sure that other people are involved in that whole process. So it's a whole community process when those artistic features are put together on that. Um, so please watch for those dates that are coming up. Um, I know Jessica is working great with the, um, our uh, Kathleen and her group, and there's going to be a schedule that will be posted on when the, the mall, I think they'll call it the studios, opened up, and for the people in the community to come together and kind of assemble those final things. So just in closing, I just wanted to appreciate, I know it's been a long process, um, but I think, you know, the winner in the whole thing is will be the community with these enhancements that are done on the amazing wharf that will be hopefully resilient for years to come. So thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Good evening, Karen Hanna. Um, primary, my primary, primary concern right now is the bathroom. 
Um, to say that it blends in with the Venetians is works in that one photograph you showed, but it doesn't work in reality. And um, the people in the Venetians and a lot of the people up on the cliff and everybody else, there weren't a bunch of phone calls about the color because they loved it. There was like, what is, when are you gonna, when, is that the box that came in? Is, is this a primer that they had to put on it for, for travel? It, it just is completely out of place. So um, uh, the alternative of painting has some severe drawbacks in, in longevity and maintenance because as soon as somebody figures out that you can, you know, carve into that brown paint and it's blue underneath, uh, you know, we're in, we're in trouble. And it, there's clearly not going to be a lot of money to repaint that every five years or six years or whatever, whatever it takes. So the expenditure at the beginning of it would make a lot more sense than trying to maintain it over over time. Um, there was a savings for ordering it painted um, rather than wood clad. So that that was cheap, a cheaper model. So that amount of money should be taken into consideration. Um, from all, I've attended every single meeting and of course working with CWEP, there's really not much reason to have a, a hookup in the beginning. We already have talked about simplifying the entryway and not making it busy and cluttered with a lot of things. So I don't think you're going to be having food service or something else down in the in the front of the wharf. So there's another savings there. So um, uh, one of the things that the people who came and did did the surveys and came to the community meetings was don't make it look like Disneyland. Don't make it look like LA. Don't put a lot of color out there. We were thinking color in the beginning on the light poles and things like that. All of that got eliminated. Everything got toned down. And I just think that the, the, the paint is just not going to do ju justice to what the whole project should look, uh, look like. So I hope you will consider um, allocating the fur full 25000 on the um, uh, restroom cladding. Thank you. Thank you. Any further public comment? Hi, welcome. Hi. I have a number of questions. <laughs> and it just seems like um, the wharf, the way the catastrophic storms and the ocean rising mm -hmm. all over and coastal communities in trouble all over the planet, it, it just seems like the ocean's going to take it. I mean, wharfs are lovely. They're tourist attractions. But are they going to be viable like this? So I, I just wonder the money going into that. And then is there, I drive on Stockton Street. I. I have a chiropractor in Capitola, so I'm out on Stockton Street. Is I'm trying to picture this, and I didn't look through the whole staff report. Is there an existing bridge, or is this a project for to put in a Stockton bridge? Can someone answer that, or where I go to look? If I have this question, I'm thinking other members of the community may as well. So we don't do back and forth during public comment, but once your public comment is complete, we can ask a council member and a staff member to address it. Yeah, I, I would appreciate that because it seems like Capitola is so lovely the way it is. You know, this quaint city of Capitola going back to Camp Capitola and the history and putting in a new bridge, if that's what's happening, sounds like it's going to damage that kind of beauty of the existing city and cause damage down the line. So I'll listen for your explanation so I can get a picture of what, what's actually on the board here. Thank you. Thank you. Any further public comment? Seeing none, we'll bring it back to council. Uh, and I think I'll start just real briefly. 
uh, by sharing the existing Stockton Bridge. There's already a Stockton Bridge. We're not putting in a new bridge. Uh, it begins where the Venetian Hotel is, and it spans over the Soquel Creek, where the creek runs into the, the ocean. So it's already there. You might not even notice it unless you're on the beach looking at it. Yep, right there in that picture. <laughs> the, the painting on the wall right next to you. That's Stockton Bridge. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, so I'll bring it back to council uh, for consideration, uh, deliberation, and a vote, and I'll start at this end this time. Councilmember Clark. Julia, could we bring up the slide that talked about things they wanted to take out? Cost saving options. Oh, yes, I'm sorry, that is it. Um, <clears throat> well, the, the first of all, the, the hookups. Um, I think if we don't have enough starting off and we try to put more in, that could be more problematic. So I, I think we need all the hookups that we can get. Um, because for us to come back and do it would probably cost more money, right? The wood cladding on the restrooms, I think it's really important that we, we see this through. Take out $25,000 when we're so close to the end. Um, doesn't make sense. Like our speaker said, we, we got some money back from ordering the wrong bathrooms. And even with a little bit that's going to cost extra, it's, it's going to keep the look of the wharf consistent on the project from the, the front to the end. So I think, I think it's really important. Again, that's, that's all I have for now. But yes, I think that uh, we should see the project through. Staff has, has shown us that it's possible for us to get there, so we should get there. Thank you. Councilmember Morgan? Yeah, thank you. Um, so I, um, I would just disagree on the hookups. I think focusing on two at the head of the wharf would be more important. That way we could jump down to the 85. Um, that would then give us our 25 if we're going to do the wood. Um, I would definitely... Um, reserve the vehicle runners for when we find a time that they might be more necessary. See kind of how um, that goes with the use of the wharf and um, whatever ends up happening out there. Um, and so I'm just wondering with I, I'm not a quick math person so I, I'm just looking. So if we did um, that 35,000 removed for the vehicle runners um, could also potentially go towards the wood paneling for the restroom. Um, which then, I, now that I'm thinking about wood, how easy is wood to scratch and damage and how much upkeep is that over repainting if that's also a concern. Um, so I, I, me personally, I'm not married to either idea like 100%. Um, so I'm interested to see what other people say too. Um, but I'm just kind of trying to get a grander scheme of like if if we did, if we take out some of these things that are not super necessarily what that might leave us with. And then if there is the option of allocating maybe that 20,000 buffer from facilities or whatever we need to pull from, in order for Jessica to <laughs> push through and get our cleanup done and everything and not have to come back to us for each little item like that. Um, I would be interested to see how others feel about that as well. Um, I think that's all. I, uh, yeah. Quick rebuttal about the wood siding. The type of wood that they're planning on using is a, a strong bamboo. So it holds up probably better than the paint that's going to hold up. Okay. The type of wood that they're using. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Vice Mayor Brooks? Um, I'd be interested in looking at um, our amendment to the adopted budget to include the extra potential $100,000 that you're anticipating, Jessica. Um, I think that we could increase it by removing, taking out the 100000 while well, there's 140 left on the Stockton Avenue project add the 100,000 in, so that would give you 530. So the adopted resolution amending the 23-24 to allocate amount not to exceed 530,000. Um, now, that is a whole lot of money 
to to allocate extra to, but to your point of not going back and forth, um, it allows you for those closing costs and all those other things. And I would agree that we only need the two temporary utility hookups, that we need to include the wood cladding on the restrooms. You know, I am partial. I don't, the Cushman, the runners, I don't even know what that even means or when we're going to have a garage, uh, garbage truck out there. I don't know. And, um, but I trust you. Um, so I can almost, I would be interested in getting your staff's response on allocating those extra dollars to complete this project in, in, in its entirety. And if you feel that that's necessary or would be helpful for you um, to, to add that extra cost or add those extra dollars in today. I will answer from a public works and a finance perspective. <laughs> um, I wouldn't, barring any other natural disasters between now and the end of this project, I would say an extra $100,000 to the ask from the uh, staff report would get us to the end of this project. Okay. Um, and and I only introduce this to, to my colleagues up here because I, I'm hoping that FEMA will come in with some reimbursements. I'm hoping that Cal OAS will come in with some reimbursements. I know staff has worked really hard with them. We've all been had the opportunity to meet with many of them. So um, it'd be nice to see that. I'm looking to our city manager for his take on my suggestion. I think, let me just try and make sure that we have, staff understands it correctly. The first is, is that we would take the temporary utility hookups down to 85,000 and only do the two at the end of the wharf. We would do the wood cladding. We would remove the vehicle runners for the time being, install them later. But that would take our funding gap to re fifteen eighty. I see three fifteen. One twenty. Because the funding gap, because we're getting rid of, or we're keeping the twenty five thousand. We're getting rid of the thirty five thousand. We're bringing the hundred down to eighty five. Right? Did I do my math wrong? I don't know. I wouldn't I be surprised. I have a spreadsheet here. 125 plus 180 plus 80 plus 25 plus 25 plus 1524. No, we're not including that 10524, are we? No. No. So this is the sum of these, the changes? So I think 415. Okay. 415. Is that what you said? No, you said 380. We were both wrong. I'm saying 380. That's what this Excel spreadsheet, it may be that the it's a negative. The 35K for the vehicle. Uh, Where's Jim? Where are you at? <laughs> <laughs> my calculator apparently is very broken. I will not be helping my daughter with math this evening. So no, I'm getting 415. Yeah. 125 plus 180 plus 85 yeah. plus 25 is 415. With a $35,000 credit. Minus thirty. So you're adding thirty-five. It's a thirty-five thousand dollars credit. Ew. Three eighty. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, mm -hmm. I see. Okay. So we were all right. <laughs> this one, we were all right. We were all sure. right. I, I like to so, go with that. Um. Okay. So this it, is what, yeah. This was what I heard. There was the three eighty in sort of approved changes, and then you were also prepared to, let's see if I can find it quickly here, um, move the budget amount from the facilities fund up by $100,000, so there'd be, we'd essentially end up with about a $150,000 contingency for that. I was gonna say, we only need to move an additional $50,000 to, to make us have an additional 100,000 to be able to use. So we don't need to move the full 100. We just need to move 50. I'm hearing, I'm seeing yes from our public works director. And yes is good with me. I want to see this project through. Um, I, I mean, you're finding continuous cost saving measures and I know you'll continue to do so. Um, I think you'll listen to Planning Commission on any other feedback. I, I heard Katie say, you know, it was a mistake on, you know, on with, with the bathroom situation. And um, so it, it looks like there's constant um, communication happening and we're all in this together. So um, if all you need, Jessica, is another 100,000, I would be willing to propose that 
So the final number, Jim, you're going to hold it up slowly for me. I'm in the back. That we would adopt a resolution amending the fiscal year 23-24 adopted budget to allocate an amount not to exceed. 430, which is what was already in the report, right? I, th I think what Councilmember Brooks is saying is 530, increasing the facilities fund allocation from 200 to $300,000. No, because we just said that if we want to have an additional 100000 after the value engineering. I think you guys are, yes, this would leave us with $150,000 contingency. I think Council Member Brooks was proposing. $100,000. I think Council Member Brooks is proposing one hundred and fifty. dollars No. She was oh, initially proposing that we end up with $100,000 that is able for wrap-up, but because of the value engineering, we had 50 left over, so now we only need to move 50, which still leaves us with $100,000. So that's 430, which is what was in the original request, right? Wasn't that what? Yeah, right there, 430. But it's not, it doesn't, it's but it's not for the same reasons. That's, yeah. that's just magic. Like, it's ironic that the number showed up it as 430. Is, yeah. It's ironic. It's not. You don't need to change anything in, in what we're requesting in the Actually, what, resolution. Yeah, in the resolution. I can it's try just again. the way that. Can you sure. give us maybe just like two, like a minute and a half, two minutes, just to make sure we're. The goal here is to have a hundred thousand dollars left yes. after these changes, correct? Correct. Yes. Okay. Give me just one sec. Okay. Jim, help him out. Four eighty. Yeah. Four eighty. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Four eighty. Okay. Yeah, because we're so yeah, it's four eighty. Fifty. That's right. It's four eighty, and the amount from the facilities reserve would be two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Facilities reserve to yeah so, yes yeah, so this goes up fifty thousand the total amount goes to four eighty and that's to cover up to a hundred thousand dollars in closing, that's correct closing costs as we're now referring to it but we get it back if we don't spend it hundred percent get it back <laughs> you, you don't have to spend it all yeah <laughs> okay the goal not to spend all that money <laughs> I would like to move forward. Um, I'd like to adopt a resolution amending the fiscal year 23-24 adopted budget to allocate an amount not to exceed $480,000 in funding for the WARF project for additional project expenditures with notes that we will be reducing the temporary utility hookups. We will be adding the wood cladding to the restrooms, and that we will not be installing, removing the vehicle runners from Cushman, Cushman's scope. That is my motion. I'll second. I'm allowed to second. Yeah. Sure. I have a comment. I know. We're not. Yes, go ahead. We have a motion and a second for the sake of discussion. Go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just personally not prepared to reallocate the $140,000 from Stockton Bridge uh, project for these purposes. As in my mind, Stockton changed it to only 50000 Can you confirm that? So the motion, the motion on the floor is 140000 from Stockton Bridge and that... Right, that's what I thought. Okay. Um, because... Um, and I'm not going to um, approve this motion or vote for this motion personally because, um, in my mind, the Stockton Avenue Bridge project is a safety and disaster preparedness project. And the wharf enhancements are aesthetic and bells and whistles on the edge of this project. Not to say that they aren't important, and I wouldn't love to fund them, but I'm not prepared to take it from what I consider a safety project. Thank you. I'm going to comment. Yeah. Um, so I I hear what you're saying, Councilmember Peterson. Um, and it if you heard earlier about where the funds are coming from, we have facility funds left over, we have Stockton Avenue funds, and we have the potential of getting money back. Um, the this is not about not thinking about safety. We have the opportunity to continue to work with our, our, our state officials. This is our opportunity to continue to work with our federal officials and to really work with FEMA on this. 
Um, so I want to be clear to our constituents here that this isn't a matter of me choosing one or the other. There's still additional dollars um, that we can use to continue to fund Stockton, Bridge, uh, Stockton Avenue Bridge should we need to. And I want to be clear with that, that there's, there's still that opportunity. Um, I hate using the word shell game, but sometimes this is what it looks like. Um, but there's still funds um, and facilities and other things that lie there. And so if we do see with the, um, the report back on options, it's not going to stifle that project. So that's why I feel com comfortable um, allocating these dollars this, uh, this evening. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like to uh, yeah, go ahead. jump in there and echo that uh, we, we probably will hopefully see some funds coming um, from the disaster, the second one. And public safety is always on the front of all of our minds. And I don't believe that uh, changing or taking some of the money now f to finish our project in the wharf is going to jeopardize the public safety. So I uh, just wanted to make sure I got that out there. Any other comments? Any other comments? All right. Okay. We have a motion and a second uh, on the floor. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Any abstentions? All right. Motion carries four to one with Council Members Clark, uh, Morgan, Vice Mayor Brooks, and Mayor Brown voting uh, yes, and Council Member Clark voting no and no abstentions. Peterson, Peterson I'm sorry. Um, Peterson voting no uh, and no abstentions. With that, uh, we are at the end of our meeting. Thank you all for being here tonight. Uh, please take care of yourselves and take care of each other. The meeting is adjourned.